so serious today. Come on. Isn't it a great day? Amen. Yeah, it's a little warmer here than where I was in Utah. Man, and I, I ran into some snow on several <laughs> occasions. But I had a great time, and uh, I saw my grandchild for the first time, in it, And I got to spend a little time with my granddaughter, Eleanor, and my saw my two boys, Justin and Andrew. We call them Drew, and uh, so, and Jillian, of course, my oldest daughter. We had a great time for Thanksgiving, and thank you for letting me have a little break. And uh, uh, I actually even went skiing, and somebody said, uh, you didn't break a leg, so I am... I'm, I'm still sore, I'm telling you. I am still still sore. I fell and uh, I think I, I hurt something right in here a little bit, but that's all good. It's part of the experience. If you've never done it before, you know, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it because you have to have a little practice, especially when you go, I went to Snowbird, which is just 15 minutes from their house. And uh, took the gondola all the way up to the very top, and that's how you start. I'm going, this is crazy. You need to start on the bunny hill and then work your way up. But uh, we just went right to the top, uh, and it was awesome. It was great. Uh, stay with me. We're starting a new series, and uh, it's entitled The True Spirit of Christmas. And, uh, and I just want to really, really emphasize the true spirit. There's a spiritual battle that's going on, and there's a true spirit that wants to penetrate through it all. The true spirit of Christmas, the spirit of God, wants to touch our lives, especially when we are trying to celebrate. Let's not get caught up in the wrong spirit, but in the right spirit of Christmas. So uh, I'm going to read to you just our theme scripture, and it's just a simple Scripture out of, um, uh, out of Luke chapter 1, and we're going to be staying in Luke, pretty much uh, Luke 1 and 2 for this whole next few weeks. But I just want you to understand that this portion of Scripture is there. Luke one thirty five says this, and the, angel answered and, okay. and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. We'll tell you if we need anything, we need the Holy Spirit to come upon us. We really do. The true spirit of Christmas needs to come into our lives. And the, the power of the highest will overshadow you. It's almost like if you think about Christmas, it's almost like there's something that's so powerful. And yet the world wants to take it in a different direction. There's something so wonderful and wants to overshadow us. And yet if we're not careful, the bright lights of the world will just try to, to drown it out. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So, Father, we humbly, humbly come before you today. We thank you for bringing us together. Thank you, Lord, for just allowing your spirit to rest upon each and every one of our lives. We need to understand the true spirit of Christmas. We desire, Lord, to learn of you, to grow in you, to experience you in a greater way. And we say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome. Overshadow us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Turn to someone and say, I'm glad I'm here. Come on. tradition and, and what the world has done with Christmas and and, uh, and it's important that we find the true meaning of what really took place and it didn't start in December and it's not really that Jesus Christ even was born in December I don't know if that's something that will blow your mind it's just that sometimes the world wants to kind of pinhole everything into a this perfect mold but it doesn't fit so one of the things I want you to show, show you here in chapter 1, beginning with verse 1 of Romans, I mean of, of Luke. See, I'm still in Romans. <laughs> Luke, chapter 1. And this is one of the things about Luke. Luke was a doctor. And Luke, uh, he was also kind of a historian. He really wanted to, to communicate certain things. And this is how it starts out. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order the narrative of these things which have been fulfilled among us. So he's saying, since there's been people that have communicated this, I feel like it's my job. So let's read on a little bit more, verse 2. 
It says, just as those who formed the beginning, uh, from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. So we're talking about eyewitnesses now, people that he talked to, people that he uh, communicated with. Verse 3 communicates this even further. It seems good to me also, having had perfect or a clear understanding of all things from the very first to write to your orderly account, most excellent Theophilus. The Theo. Do you know what that means? You guys know what that means? It means lover of God. So in some ways, I don't know if this was a true person or if he was just trying to say, listen, anyone who's a lover of God would want to have a complete picture or clear, clarity on this, uh, a perfect understanding of what really took place. And this name means lover of God. So, how many of you are lovers of God in this place? Amen. And how many of you want a, a clearer understanding of how all this stuff took place? Amen. And so we, we have this laid out for us. Let's go on just a little bit more here. And it says here that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. So God wants to also instruct us. He wants to teach us some things, okay? So let's read on a little bit more here as we go. And this is one of the things that we see here with just the word. That this is called the lover of God. And I, I really want to emphasize this. When we, if we love God, the opportunity to talk about or to understand in depth a little bit more about how he was born and what took place and how all of that stuff took, manifested in the world. I, I want to know more about that. Because I'm a lover of God and you're a lover of God. So let's together discover this journey that we're on. And so if we're going to do that, let's read a little further as, as he unfolds. Because one of the things that we're looking for is the word of the Lord. We want the word of the Lord for our lives. We want the word of the Lord for us. And the third, second thing that we have up here is the problem with tradition is if we're not careful, tradition can separate us from the true meaning of what Christmas is all about. Tradition is important. And I'm going to say tradition is part of our lives. Tradition helps us uh, put things in, 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 in context a lot of times. And it forces us to celebrate certain things on a consistent basis. But then also, one of the last things that we see is the state of our world. The world will take Christmas and totally take it in the wrong direction. Okay, so the true meaning of it. So we need the word of God. We need to understand the true traditions. And we need to understand the state of the world. But not only for us, but it was also the same for them back then. And so that's what we're going to read a little bit more about. Let's go on. And so we're going to talk about John's birth announcement to Zechariah. So this is where it really begins. So we say, wait, wait a minute, we're talking about Jesus. No, if we really want to know about the birth of Jesus, the first thing we need to know is that there was a forerunner. His name was John the Baptist, okay? And he was to come first and then Jesus. And so let's read a little bit more about this. So there was in the day of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So we have Zacharias and Elizabeth. And it's important for us to kind of get a picture of what he was all about. So let's read on. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord, and blameless. So what we see here is just that they were good people. How many of you trying to be good people? Just try, I mean, you're trying to be good people, but... Even in the process of being good people and doing the right things, not always everything works out the way you want. Who am I talking to? <laughs> okay. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. And this is something that seems to be a narrative in the scriptures. There's, there's seven actually, and I'm going to talk about this in the next few weeks, but... There's actually seven miraculous births in the Bible, or supernatural encounters of births in the Bible. And I've added one to it. I think that there's eight, and we'll dig into that a little bit more. So let's read on. So Zechariah, the word Zechariah means the Lord has remembered. See, God doesn't make mistakes. So lovers of God, the Lord remembers. And Elizabeth's name means, let's jump on there. Probably did, was it a ray up there? What, what happened to that one? 
It's not. No, no, this is Zacharias. We have Elizabeth. Elizabeth is not up there? No, it's not. Okay, Elizabeth means the promise of God or the oath of God. Okay, so one of the things that you need to see here with this is that God has an order. Lovers of God, God has a promise for you. And he wants, he wants to remember. He wants, he has, lover of God, he wants to remember and he has an oath or promise for you. Even in the words themselves, you catch something that God's trying to communicate. So let's go on to the next scripture. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division. So one of the things about Zacharias is that there was a traditional order of how things needed to take place. And he was a priest. And he served at the temple. Okay, so let's read on a little bit more. According to the customs of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. So his lot. This is so, so it seems so simple. But this was a once in a lifetime experience. It, it is hard for us to dig into this a little bit. but So you have all these priests and the order that they are to follow. And that there, there's so many of them that there's a chance that maybe you won't or you will have the experience of being able to go into the holy place, in the temple, and offer incense in that place. And John, it fell upon Zacharias, Zacharias to have that experience. And so he, for the first time in his whole life, now he's an old man already, but for the first time he has had the opportunity to bring the incense into the holy place. Now, you work all of your life for this one experience, and it's, it's like there it is, this one experience to go into, because this was the most sacred thing of all. I mean, we, we, we kind of have a little understanding of the temple. For us, it's different because the, now we have access, but at that time, the Holy of Holies was not accessible. You were not allowed to go in. And so you have this process you had to go through. And this was his experience, Zechariah's experience. So it goes on. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. So here it is. The people are outside are praying. And Zechariah is going in. He's going in to represent all the people and to offer up all the prayers for all the saints. Anybody got any prayers? Anybody got any issues? Anybody got any things that are going on? Okay, so here, all of these burdens and all of these prayers fall upon Zacharias, and then Zacharias goes in, and he offers them up as an incense offering in the holy place. And it goes on, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. The holy place. Verse uh, 12, it says, And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. I mean, come on, you go into this holy place, this is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and an angel shows up, and the chances of you surviving, because, you know, they talk about this a little bit. You're in the holy place, and the chance of you to survive, they actually tie a rope around you to make sure that if something does help, they can pull you back out. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you shall call his name John. Your prayer has been heard. How many of you feel like that your prayers are not being heard? You, you go through it over and over and over and over again. And I want to I dig there just for a second. Because we all have prayers that were desperately wanted to be answered. I have prayed some prayers that have not been answered yet. I'm holding on to these prayers, and, and this is one of the things that it says here, your prayers have been answered. I mean, can you just imagine an angel saying, this has happened. I've heard your prayer. And so, he even struggles with it. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. So he's going, what, what, me? I'm going to have a son? And for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit. What are we talking about? The true meaning of Christmas? Being filled with the Spirit. Having an understanding of those things, even from his mother's womb. This was unheard of. 
John means Jehovah is gracious. Right, John? Is that what your name means? So what we have, lover of God. We have Zacharias, which means, come on, God remembers. Elizabeth, which means God's promised or oath. He's promised us this. And now, Jehovah is gracious. That's the order of, you see an order here? You see something unfolding a little bit? So let's read on a little bit more here. And he will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children's disobedience to the wisdom of, of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So actually, the angel actually quotes part of the very last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. If you go there and you're in chapter 4, you'll actually see it. It says, I will turn the hearts of the fathers towards the sons and the sons' hearts towards their fathers. And here it talks about that. And it says, and Zechariah said to the angel, how shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. And so listen, this guy had been praying for so long and he's been so faithful and been caught up in tradition doing his thing. And now all of a sudden, now the angel promises him something and he goes, I don't know if that's really going to happen. I don't know if this is really going to happen. How shall I know? And so the angel says, and then so it said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. So I'm, I'm the one that's delivering this from God, directly from God to you, because that's what Gabriel was. He was the messenger. And so he said, I'm delivering this directly from the throne of God and giving it to you. Verse 20. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their own time. So what happens here? Zacharias all of a sudden can't talk. He becomes mute. He's inside the temple offering incense and he's talking to the angel and the angel says, you know, to prove that this is going to happen, you're not going to be able to speak for a while. Now, what's interesting, if you know a little bit of history, is that from Malachi until Matthew is a 400 year of silence. Silence. No, nothing is being said. God didn't speak for 400 years. Can you imagine following tradition, going to church, doing the things that God's telling you to do, and you don't hear nothing? Look, how old is America? 240 years? Can you imagine 400 years of silence? Of not hearing from God. Just trusting. Just nothing is coming forth. And then the first time the angel does speak, I don't know if I believe this or not. And so he's silent for another. He can't tell for another nine months. There's another nine, there's another nine months of silence. So we have that. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. What's taking this guy so long? What's taking God so long? What's, what's holding up the process here in our lives? What, why is it not happening yet? Because the people want their prayers to be answered, and the people waited. And so <clears throat> we have a little bit more about this. Let's read on. Let's read on. And so it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zechariah, because that's normal. So a whole nine months passes by, and now they're supposed to name this child Zacharias because that's the order. You've, you know, I have a son named Andrew. I guess that's how you do it. Justin, my other son, his name is Justin Andrew, and then I have Andrew Philip. I mean, we, did you put your name, John, did you put your name in your kids' thing? You're not, you're not one of those priests? Okay. So it was on the... Go back. So it was on the eighth day, sort of the child that they would have called him Zacharias. That's what they were supposed to do. Let's read on. His mother answered and said, No, 
he shall be called John. No. God wants to be gracious. Jehovah wants to be gracious. He wants to speak again. He wants to communicate again. And so what we see here as we go on, verse 61 says, But they said to her, There is no one among you relatives who is called by this name. Do you ever feel like that maybe I, I won't experience God's grace? I can't really experience God's grace. I've been praying about some stuff, but it's not really happening. Sixty-two. So they made a sign to his father what he would have him called. So they say, okay, you can't talk. What do you want? What shall we do? And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. So they all marveled. I want, I want to stick just for a minute. Yes, God wants to, wants us to remember certain things, but God wants us to experience his grace more than we realize. Amen. Zacharias means to remember. But God doesn't want us just to remember our sin and our pain and our difficulty. He wants to conquer them in our lives. Amen. And he wants to show us his gracious love for us. And so he says, no, I don't want you just to remember your pain. I want you to know my grace in your life. I want you to know that I am gracious to you. And so they marveled. Verse 64 says, I immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke praising God. So all of a sudden now after nine months or literally 400 years, 400 years and nine months of silence, and all of a sudden we have him praising God, acknowledging this. I mean, this is amazing to me. It's just powerful. Then the fear came of all who dwelt around them, and all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hills in the countryside of Judea. This is why we're talking about this. It's because the Spirit of God came upon Zacharias. This whole experience was spread throughout this whole region because they had witnessed a man going into the temple, not being able to... To, you know, going in to do some prayers and stuff and then coming out and not being able to talk. And then his wife was going to have a child, which he shouldn't have because they're too old for all of that stuff. And then there's nine months of silence. And then all of a sudden now we're going to change everything. And we're not even going to name him after my, my name. We're going to change everything and call him Jehovah is gracious. So this is what we have. Let's read on a little bit more. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts saying, what kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was upon him. And we know John the Baptist. We know what he did. We know his ministry. We know what he did. He was a forerunner for Jesus. So let's read on a little bit more. So <clears throat> this is Zechariah's prophecy. The first thing that Zechariah does when he opens his mouth is he praises God and he begins to prophesy. You into this prophecy? Do you guys need an encouraging word today? Let's hear it. All right, here's the prophecy. Come on. Now, his father Zechariah is filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, listen, guys, we need to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. And we need to prophesy into our lives the Amen. things that God wants to fulfill. Here it is. Blessed is the, the, the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Amen. He has visited us. That's what Christmas is all about. A visitation from heaven. And he has redeemed his people. And he has raised up a horde of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Come on, stay with me. Go, let's go. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet who have been since the world began. Verse 7. That we should be saved from our enemies. Come on. To be saved from our enemies in the hand of all who hate us. Who hates you? Who hates you? Come on. You're going to be saved from all of your enemies and all who hate you to perform the mercy promised by our fathers and to, to remember his holy covenant. And there he goes again. I've made a covenant with you guys. Verse 30, uh, 40, 73. The oath will, which he swore to our father Abraham. 
to grant us that we being delivered. How many of you want to be delivered? Come on. Yes. Delivered from the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. Amen. Come on, let's serve him without fear. We don't have to be afraid. We can serve and we can be a part of verse 75. In holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Come on, just a few more verses. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. This is again, it's a promise that God has said that he's going to deliver us. Through the tender mercy of our God, with which the day spring from our high has visited us. Look the last verse here. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the prophecy that he gives. Now, if we, if we just kind of take it all in, and if you have this next part up, this next part in is, is again, this... I don't know if we have them all. So we have lover of God. Let's go real quick. Lover of God. We have this whole concept of Elizabeth means God's oath. John means Jehovah is gracious, filled with the Spirit, blessed, redeemed, saved from our enemies, mercy, promise, deliverance, to serve, to give light, no death, the way of peace. These are the words that God has promised us. And these are the words of the angel. And these are the words that we need to take hold of during this Christmas season. How many of you need some breakthroughs in your life? How many have been praying for something that has not happened? Come on. And you need it to happen. God needs to take over that situation. With man it seems impossible, but with God all things are possible. And I want you to know that when you pray, God remembers. And when you seek God's oath or God's promise is real. Because God wants to be gracious towards us. And he wants to redeem us. Look, look at that list. Just look at that list. Blessed. Redeemed. Saved. Mercy. I just want to spend a second here. See, the world tells us that we're cursed. The devil tells us we're cursed. God says you're blessed. Redeemed. You've been purchased by God. Saved. Saved from your enemies. Mercy. How many of you need some mercy? Come on. I mean, if, if you got what you do deserve, you'd, you'd be in trouble. We need mercy. We need deliverance. How many of you need a, a true breakthrough? Because there's some things, like with the song that Milan and the praise team was singing earlier was, My Flesh is Weak. You know, sometimes, but, but the Spirit of God is strong. And he wants to deliver you, to serve, to give light. How many of you are sick and tired of darkness? Come on. Quit a Quit having death in your life, the way of peace. If we could just bow your heads just for a moment. Now, if we're not careful, we make this a story, but we don't apply it to our lives. Maybe you came to church today, and you've been struggling with life. And there's some prayers that you've been praying. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I've screwed up. Lord, I'm cursed. I need your help. If you're that person, I want you to know that God loves you. He remembers you today. He has a promise for you today. He wants to show you his grace. If you're here and you need to accept him as your Lord and Savior, let him overshadow you and let the Son of God come into your life. Receive him today. Is there anyone who needs to accept him? If you are, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand if you're here today and you need to accept Christ into your heart and into your life. 
How many of you have got some, some prayers that you need answered? I want you to stand. If you've got a prayer that you need answered, I want you to stand where you are. Just stand up. Just stand up. Stand up. You know, sometimes we struggle waiting for two weeks, or two months, or two years. Can you imagine waiting for 400 years? But we're not in that time anymore. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of breakthrough. Today we have access to the Father. Today we can pray. Today, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can ask. So, Father, you see every person standing here today. They have a prayer request. They have a need. They have, a, they have something, Lord, that they want you to remember. Lord, they, they, they want your promise to be fulfilled in their lives. Lord, they need you. We need you. Help us, Lord, not to get caught up in the wrong things, but seeking you, coming into and offering prayers and incense, offering our hearts and our lives to you. Help us, Lord, to hold on to this prophecy by faith, because, Lord, you have promised, and you have promised is faithful. Why don't you just take the person's hand next to you, and let's pray together and agree. Just grab the person sitting next to you, even if they're sitting, it doesn't matter. We're going to step down here and we're going to grab a hold. It says, Lord, where there's two or three agree upon any one thing, it shall be done. Yes. Lord, we are in need of breakthroughs in our lives. We're in need, Lord, of your spirit upon us. Lord, there are situations and circumstances that are out of our control. And Lord, we are here we're here because of a traditional Sunday morning. But we don't want to be caught up just to come to church. We want to be caught up in your spirit, in your promise, in your prophecy. Lord, that you will redeem, that you will set free, that you will deliver, that you will change our situations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want you to know that we're not, we're not without hope. We have the promise of the Lord. We have this, the wonderful promise of the Lord. And again, I just want to just share with you and for you to realize how awesome this is and how God des desires to bless our lives beyond what we can even imagine. Let me just pray this prayer over us. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. For he has visited and redeemed his people. That's us. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us. He has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of those who hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant and the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness, righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Hallelujah. And this is how it ends. By the remission of our sins through the tender mercies of our God that we would be able to walk forth into peace. I release you in peace. I trust that you're going to have an awesome week. Come back next week and we'll continue the series. And if you want to study a little bit with me, read Luke chapter 1, read Luke chapter 2, and let's be on the same two pages or two chapters. God bless you.
God bless you. If you need prayer, if you need any kind of prayer, if you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to come and let's make a commitment to be there for one another. God bless you.